brand new dress. A second royal purple spandex skin taut to my thick. I was tentative at first, but erred on the side of the bowl. I would also shine on this first afternoon, and all my friends would link arms around each other's little waists, and we'd be beautiful. The earliest party was on the other side of town. I wanted to go, so I hit the pavement in my new purple skin. Doesn't it bother you to know where this is going? Gazes that penetrate. Vehicles slowed to match my fearful hesitance. A carving into speculative glory shots and my transformation into a series of orifices or a side of me. I did not go into the party. I sat on the steps instead, crying, wondering what it would be like if it were all right for people to cruise slow and shout nigger or kike or towelhead or gook from the driver's seat. Two, this is not about men or women. It is about the fabric stretched between us, tainted by the thrill of the chaste, shot through with silken masquerade and leather riding boots. A tug of war tension is woven into the tablecloth. It disrupts everyone's butter knives and water before we even sit down to eat. We look past each other. Sweeping through coded scripts, laboring in opposition, we do not recognize that this is a table set for cannibals, that we destroy each other in fork and knived precision with every dropped phrase or sidestepped intention. Let us swipe the silver from its proper setting, strip off the tablecloth, break bread with calloused hands, and confront our failed performance. Three. She is rubbing herself against him in a basement. Sweat slicks them both and smacks as she pulls away to dance with someone else. <laughs> Pupils still trained on his over myriad bobbing heads. He is her friend. He has the authority of years behind his envelope hugs and shoulder draped walks. She knows him. Circuitous return from the dance floor, she touches him like home plate. He wonders if this time she will take him seriously. Afraid to ask, he whirls her drunken dervish through her favorite songs. He is her friend, her home plate. She can trust him. Her smile is a fan of printed imitations. Hands around the base of her head, he pulls her towards him. She resists, but the smile never falters. He could make her happy, if only he could show her. Tonight is his chance. He cannot give up so easily. Four. He says it is not as easy as law and order. I agree, it isn't. He adds, sometimes it's blurry. Blurry. This is a word I know. I have chewed on it, like moss grown on the backs of silent incisors, slouched off by a nosy tongue and ground like sloppy bovine cud between my molars. Blurry is bland. Moist. It cannot be cut or apportioned appropriately. All it can do is shroud truth in distance and absolve precision and clarity of their responsibility. Revulsion locks a tight fist around my stomach every time I am told that it is possible for <coughs> rape to be blurry. As if <coughs> blurry were the opposite of simple. I thought the opposite of simple was complex. In complexity, 
I see space for the delicateness of details needed to explain how it is that a man I loved became my rapist. In complexity, there are handfuls of alphabet magnets I can throw and throw and throw until the letters line up. Words somehow acquire definitions. I remember how to speak. His nests, his words, they are but failed vessels for me. There is no way for me to tell you exactly what it is that has been taken from us. I just have to take our broken word for it. 